Colonel Giles. Yep. The memorabilia behind you. <laughs> it's it's all the little trophies and bits and pieces. That's only part of it. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can see that. That's the that's the new medal and coin that we've had struck and those will be available on Sunday. Thank you. There's Kevin Ashton there. Hello Kevin. Good afternoon all. Good afternoon Kevin. That's, Thank that's you for coming. Speaking. You are most welcome. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> Okay, we are only missing Councillor Vasco da Gama. So Untlaga will assist him to join. Yeah. Is 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 he joining Untlaga? Uh he's still logging in, madam. Let's give him a minute, but maybe we can go live in the meantime. Um in the interest of time, I'll be assisting him in the background. Yeah, we yeah, we'll give him a, a, a minute and then uh, we'll have to start. So he will join us. All right. Thanks, madam. We'll have to start at uh, four minutes past four. Yeah. Yes, come in. Yes, come in. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, Councillor Vasco da Gama. And uh, welcome to the show. Just give me a few seconds. Okay. Um, he's not in yet. Oh, okay. He's. I see he's in now. Sorry. He, okay. He's trying to connect. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Tagama, are you in? Okay. I see him. He does. Re he does reflect on my side, though. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good afternoon, Councillor Takama. Okay. Maybe he's still muted. All right. Councillor Takama, are you in? Hello. Good afternoon, Deputy Chief Whip, Councillor Matsidi Sonsikoya. Good afternoon, and congratulations to your appointment as a Deputy Chief Whip. Thank That's you, thank you, Madam Speaker. <laughs> <laughs> thank Nyati, thank you, Madam know, Speaker. Good afternoon, <laughs> Dr. Nyati, and to your panelists. Uh, good, good afternoon, good afternoon, uh, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, do we have Councillor Takama? Yes, Councillor yes, Takama, yes. are you on? Yes. Good afternoon, Councillor Vasco Takama. Yes. Welcome to the show. Okay. All right, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Salfina Mlauzi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Madam Speaker. Thank you very and much, and all panelists. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. We are now um, uh, starting with our program. This is our weekly program. Before I do the opening remarks, please allow me to outline the program for the benefits of our panelists as well as our viewers who are following this program every Wednesday on all social media platforms. Our agenda is going to go uh, on the following sequence. We are going to have opening and welcome, which is going to be done by myself, the speaker. We are going to have uh, Godfrey Giles, a veteran, to do introduction of the team. And we'll have Peter Bailey, who will talk on the establishment of the Cape Core. And we are going to have a short history of the WWI and the Battle of the Square Hill 
by Adele uh, uh, Carrells. We are also going to have um, Peter Bailey again, who will talk on how are we going to honor the men of SACC who fought at the Battle of the Square Hill in Israel. It's going to be very interesting. I also saw some pictures that uh, I guess they will be showing us. And then we will also be taken through the life of a colored serviceman uh, and why Johannesburg should honor these citizens. And that will be done by Councillor Vasco da Gama. We'll then have an update on the Johannesburg Service Sunday, which is taking place uh, on the 20th of September, this coming Sunday, by Mr. Giles. We'll also have an update on the Cape Town Service Sunday, which is going to take place on the 27th of September, and that will be done by Kevin Ashton. We'll then have a wrap up by veteran Godfrey Giles and the closure and vote of thanks by the chair of chairs, Councillor Salfina Mulauzi. So this is how our program is today. Uh, with that said, good afternoon to our panelists. Good afternoon to all our viewers. Welcome to another installment of our Heritage Month special. Let me first convey my sincere apologies that we could not air the show last week as I unfortunately had a bereavement in my family, but I am very happy to be back today. This weekend, ladies and gentlemen, as the legislature, we are commemorating the servicemen who died in battalion in the Battle of the Square Hills. The Battle of the Square Hills is a battle in which the Cape Corps which is the main subdivision of an army, fought Turkish soldiers in Palestine during the final months of World War I and was made up of colored South African servicemen. The writ laying ceremony, as I have indicated, is in this coming Sunday, the 20th of September, 2020. And it is in honor of the brave men who save humanity and who should never be forgotten. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that great wars should never be forgotten because there are great lessons to be learned from them. War has dire effects on societies long after it has ended. Once my esteemed guests will go into detail about the World War I, I just want to highlight, just to give a highlight that where World War I had a great impact on South Africa. White South African troops were also sent to join the war in Europe, dying in their thousands. More than 2,300 white soldiers were killed in the Battle of Delville Wood alone, which we still comm commemorate annually in the city. Disaster struck when more than 600 African volunteers sent to dig trenches in France were drowned after the SS Mendy was accidentally ramped off the Isle of Wit in February 1917. On hearing of the tragedy, the then Prime Minister uh, Botha led Parliament to, uh, I mean, in standing to pay tribute to their courage and sacrifice. SS Mendy is also a rich part of our history and hence the commemoration every year. Colored South Africans were just as enthusiastic as members of the Black African community. And in September 1915, the government decided to raise an infantry battalion known as the Cape Corps, which we will go into much detail about today. They, they were active in East Africa, in Turkey, Egypt, and Palestine, and will be the center of our discussion today. The First World War, uh, ladies and, and gentlemen, changed the societal structure in that it had a huge impact on the position of women in society. In many countries, the entire adult male population was involved in fighting. This created a huge shortage of labor, which meant that the output from different sectors of the economy 
was not at maximum capacity. Our history, because if we must know where we come from in order to know where we are going and to move forward together in peace and prosperity in our country. So in the spirit of heritage months, as we are in September now, I wish for this dialogue to bring communities together to share knowledge and learn about the Battle of the Square Hills, which is considered a very significant battle in the military of South Africa. We will look at the establishment of the Cape Corps, what led to the battle, why we continue to commemorate the heroes even today, what life might have been like, especially for the black and colored servicemen at the time, and to make the link between the history and its importance on our society and heritage today. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Councillor Vasco da Gama, who is a councillor in the city of Johannesburg and a descendant. I'm very happy to know that, uh, Councillor Vasco, I've worked with you for many years. I did not know this rich history about you and what you will be sharing uh, for, uh, for us today. You are most welcome, Councillor Vasco da Gama. I am joined by historian and author, Peter Bailey, Welcome to the show, Mr. Bailey. Thank you. Thank you. Good, afternoon. Good afternoon, Councillor Vasco da Gama. If you could just sort out your network, I think you have a network problem uh, before you take the platform, before you speak. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have uh, Mr. Adele Karelsa who is a historian, an author, uh, and descendant. Welcome to the show, Mr. Carol, sir. Okay. Uh, I am also joined by Mr. Kevin Ashton, who is the organizer of the Cape Town service. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ashton. Thank, thank you, Councillor. You are most welcome. I'm also, uh, we are also joined by Mr. Kali, who is also a descendant. You are most welcome. And we appreciate that you managed to join this show, uh, though you have just been discharged from hospital yesterday. You are mo most welcome, Mr. Kali. And finally, I am joined by veteran Godfrey Giles, I'm told that you don't want that formality of being called veteran. You, you are more comfortable to be called Godfrey. Uh, veteran, Giles is, veteran Giles is the Honorary Life Vice President of the World Veterans Federation and the organizer of the Johannesburg Service. Veteran Giles has been very instrumental, ladies and gentlemen, in assisting my office with putting this very important show together. And I will hand over to him a while to formally introduce the team. I am also joined by my usual partners, Dr. Fundile Nyati, our co-anchor and partner, as well as Salfina Mulauzi, who is my co-host, as well as the chair of chairs in the city of Johannesburg legislature. I am also joined by Councillor Matsidiso Mfikwe, who is the deputy chairperson and the councillor in the city of Johannesburg. A warm welcome to you colleagues. Let's get straight into it. And without waste of time, let me call veteran Giles. Veteran Giles, over to you. Madam Speaker, thank you very much for uh, giving us this opportunity and we really do appreciate the way you are trying to bring the, all the cultures together and also recognizing the heritage of South Africa and I think it's very important. Um, I, I think you've done a fantastic job in introducing each one of the panelists. I'm not going to go into more detail um, than, than that. Uh, just a little bit more about uh, Peter Bailey. Uh, he's talking to us from Israel. Uh, he moved to Israel. He was the ex-chairman of the Jewish Ex-Service League 
here in South Africa for decades. Um, he's, a, he's a special historian that has actually highlighted South African history uh, around the world. And um, he uh, has written many papers and books, and he's got a project which we'll hear about a little bit later. But I think over to Peter now to tell us how did the Cape Corps, why, where was it, why was it established, and a little bit of history leading up to World War I. Over to you, Peter. Thank you, Godfrey, and thank you, Madam Speaker. The, the history of the Cape Corps really starts shortly after Farinic arrived in the Cape. Um, Vasco da Gama had just gone round the Cape shortly before that. Um, and then, uh, and then uh, Van Riebeck arrived and the, the Dutch East India Company brought people known as the Malays to Cape Town as slaves. They were from Indonesia and Malaya uh, and they came there to work as slaves to, to help with the farming enterprise that had been started. Miscegenation took place with the native Khoisan population, and that heralded the birth of what became known as the Coloured Community of the Cape, and remains that till this present day, the legal definition of mixed race people in South Africa is designated Coloured to this very day. From 1675 onwards, the Coloured Community had the same obligations with regard to military service as the white residents of the Cape. And that meant that they had to establish colored military units. And so was born the first colored military unit in South Africa. The first unit was founded in 1781. It was named the Corps of Hottentots, which in those days was probably politically correct and certainly wouldn't be today. Uh, the name was later changed to the Pandur Corps following the arrival of French mercenaries. The word Pandur comes from the French and refers to an irregular or mercenary force, which suggests that this force was not considered part of the regular militia at the Cape. Shortly thereafter, the British took control as things happened uh, in world politics. And in 1796, they renamed the unit as the Hottentot Corps, going back to the name Hottentot, mm -hmm. which was the forerunner of the Cape Corps. And we consider that as the real beginning of the Cape Corps. From 1800 onwards, the Corps was extensively used to enforce the rule of the British colonial authorities against the native inhabitants uh, of South Africa, particularly in the Kosa Wars, the wars against the Kosas. Uh, the, the, Cape, the, the colored unit was used by the British uh, to fight much of that war for them. The name of the Corps was then changed to the Cape Regiment in 1801 and back to the core of Hottentots in 1802, during another short-lived Dutch reoccupation at the Cape. Finally, in 1820, with the Cape once again under British rule, the advent of the 1820 settlers, the unit was renamed as the Cape Corps. And so that was the very first time we actually had something known as the Cape Corps. They served for many years uh, in various, uh, various fields, for the Cape administration. And the outbreak of the First World War meant that they were finally called up for active service. But alas, they weren't used for active service. But our deal, Carl, so is going to tell us all about that, I'm sure, the reasons why they weren't used for active service. So I'm going to continue with events after the First World War had actually ended. The military unit was disbanded after World War I and then only re-established in 1940 when there was a shortage of troops required for South Africa's effort in the Second World War. Despite its excellent combat record during World War I, the Cape Corps was again designated as a non-combatant service unit. They weren't allowed to carry arms and they were not allowed to go into combat, which was a total disservice to them. During the course of the war, because of a need for, for, uh, for troops and soldiers, their role was expanded to include the guarding of prisoners of war and other guarding tasks in the Republic of, or not in, there wasn't the Republic then, in the Union of South Africa and in other prisoner of war camps in Africa, particularly in East Africa. Uh, and it reached a peak of 23,000 men during that period, but they never participated in combat during the Second World War. Following the 1948 election and the event of the National Party government, the Cape Corps was immediately disbanded and colors were forbidden to serve in any armed forces. 
It was then reformed as a service unit in 1963, becoming a fully fledged permanent force member of the South African Defence Force in 1972. During 1973, the unit was officially designated as a South African Cape Corps Service Battalion. And in 1975, the Defence Act was amended in South Africa, granting colored soldiers equal status and rights with white soldiers. It finally happened that they were seen in exactly the same uh, way as which white soldiers were seen. The Cape Corps once again became, became a combat unit. And for the first time, members of the colored community were commissioned as officers in the South African Defense Force, a great first in South African history. And they had a proud record uh, during operational service between 1975 and the advent of the new South Africa in 1974. Since, uh, 1994, I beg your pardon. Since 1994, the integration of all South African racial groups into the South African National Defense Force has ended the need for a designated colored military unit Everybody is now treated the same. That's it. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. I'm tempted to clap hands. <laughs> <laughs> I, just want to, I just want to clear up one thing, uh, Madam Speaker. When he spoke about Vasco da Gama, that's not the Vasco da Gama we've got online at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to ask how old is Vasco da Gama. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Peter Bailey, for that, uh, for taking us through that rich journey of our history. And I'm sure that our viewers are very delighted to know this. Uh, I've done a little bit of history uh, when I was um, in high school, uh, the arrival of Jan van Ripik. You know, you've just uh, revived all that uh, in my mind. And uh, what happened there, you know, the hot and tots, the you know, the, the, the establishment of the Cape Cod. Thank you so much for that history. Without waste of time, let me hand over to Adele Carolsa, just if to I take us on the short history of the World War I and the Battle of the Square Hill. And if I can Wait. just say something about him, uh, Madam Speaker, because he's, a, he's a, a reserve officer at the moment. He's a commander in the Navy. Um, so he's still an active uh, person. He's a direct descendant, as, as you've heard, uh, which is really tremendous, a historian of note, and he helped us to put together this uh, uh, brochure that was done for the centenary, and it's got all the pictures, etc. He's done a fantastic job. And then uh, a year or so ago, he wrote a, a, an entire book, which I hope he's going to tell us the title of, and um, we need to get it to him. And just big thanks to him for uh, getting out of hospital yesterday, and uh, joining us. I really do appreciate him uh, taking the time and trouble. Thank you so much. Oops, have we lost him? Oh, there he is. Over to you, Mr. Karasa. We've lost him. Uh, no, I'm, I'm back, oh, um, Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for that. My network appears to be a little bit unstable where I am, even though I've got a backup system going at the same time. Um, Madam Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, with regard to the, to the Cape Core, there, there are a lot of mis... Okay. Charlie. And we never knew how it was going to affect us in South Africa at the time. The reality is that the world was divided into two distinct um, opposing facts. The tripartite alliance which consisted of Germany, austro Hungary, and um, later Turkey joined them. And of course, the central power which consisted of, of England, France, and Russia. Most the entire Europe was somehow intertwined with these two, two, two factions. And it was almost like two sets of gangsters on the Cape Flats bearing themselves up for a good old fight. So in essence, what then happened is when, when the war did break out, the South African Infantry Brigade was formed, which consisted of four battalions of, of, of white soldiers. And after training, they were shipped off to the Somme, where 
we know they fought with great valor and bravery during the Battle of Delva Wood, as the speaker um, previously alluded on. Aside of that, a decision was reluctantly, I might add, made to put in a black combat unit of color. Initially, when the Cape Corps was formed, it was not going to be a combat unit. What they wanted initially was a support unit, and most of the, the gentlemen did not want to, to attestate in the unit because of that. Between uh, the then Minister of Defense, General Yanis Swartz, and the Prime Minister, um, uh, General Louis Boerta, they petitioned the Imperial War Council and they were successful with the assistance of a gentleman who was a, uh, an MEC um, in the Western Cape Legislature, Dr. Abdurrahman. And thus a decision was taken to establish a full combat unit um, in the Cape Corps. When the unit was formed, the initial training camp was in my uh, area of expertise. I'm sorry, Mr. Giles, in Simonstown. So the, 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 the training camp was held virtually on naval premises. Um, the, the, the battalion, the commanding officer of the battalion was Lieutenant Colonel Morrison. The second in command was Major Hoy. The battalion was ready for operational duty and they departed on the HMT Armadale Castle from the docks in Cape Town for the first battle engagement, which was actually in German East Africa against the troops of one of the most able German commanders, General Paul von Littlephorbia. The South African Cape Corps, under the command of General Tabby Shepard, um, fought with great uh, valor during this engagement, including the Battle of Salatia Hill, the Battle of the Refugee Delta, and so forth and so forth, to the extent that a decision was made that this battalion, who by now had, had been proven himself to be battle hardened, to be reappointed and redeployed to, to the Middle East. The battalion was brought back to South Africa, where in the meantime, the training camp had moved from Simonstown to Maitland or Wingfield, as we know it today, and then from there to Kimberley. What is very interesting is that when you look at the makeup of the Cape Corps, now I'm, I've spent hundreds of hours of research in the archives in, in, in Irene, is that the Cape Corps did not consist only of colored soldiers. There were a large number of black soldiers that served in the Cape Corps as fully fledged infantrymen. Even some of them even served as, as, as machine gunners. A machine gun team consists of eight soldiers. So there was always a need to have more soldiers. And these are facts that can be corroborated within the, the realm of the, of, of, of the archives. Um, people like Willisha Balala, uh, Matanzini, and so forth. I've got a whole list somewhere of, of these guys who fought with, with, with great valor. So once the, the campaign was completed, the battalion was brought back and, and re-entrained and brought back up to full strength. In the meantime, the, the Dardanelles campaign had, had begun with a horrific defeat of the Anzacs by the Turks at, at Gallipoli. So the Turkish uh, army had their tails up and they were commanded by a person called Kamal, Mustafa Kamal, or Ataturk as he later became known, the, the founder of modern Turkey. Mustafa Kamal was a very able general and he fell under the spell of, uh, of, 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 of the German high command. And somehow they convinced him that they could extend the tentacles, which was really very substantive within the Middle East at the time, because by then we had something like 400 years of Ottoman rule. To take it one step further, one SACC, because the second battalion was, was then um, enacted to replace the first battalion for operational duty in German East Africa, um, and they were then brought back, and then they departed for operational duty. In, they arrived at a place called Al Arish. In, in, in Egypt and formed part of what is actually what was known then as the Egyptian Expeditionary Force. So we had the South African Expeditionary Force forming now part of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force under the command of Generals by Council Edwin Allenby and then further um, aligned to General Chetwold of the, the 53rd Welsh Regiment. Um, and that was the, the, the battle order for them. 
Alan Bin knew that in order for him to be successful against the Turks, that he had to deal them this one decisive blow. And that one decisive blow came on the night of the 19th of the 20th of September. At his command, he had a mounted Anzac infantry uh, brigade. He, he had a, what is very interesting also, um, at his command, the Arab Irregular Army under the command of Prince Faisal, who later became King Faisal of Saudi Arabia, and his intrepid uh, personal staff officer, Lieutenant T.E. Lawrence, or as history dubbed him Lawrence of Arabia. With them in that battle order was the 121st Indian Loyalist Infantry. No, I beg your pardon, the 121st Punjabi Infantry and the first of the 17th Loyalist Indian Infantry. So the battle plan was very simple. There were a number of hills that had to be conquered before they could get to the final stronghold of the Turks on Square Hill and Kijibet. There was Dib Hill, End Hill, Crest Hill, Way Hill, um, and, and so forth. And all these objectives had to be had to be attained one by one to get them to the point where they can attack the Turks in force at Square Hill. So the battle plan was that the first of the 17th Loyalist Infantry was going to lead the attack. But in leading the attack, the attack up to the hill, they were supposed to pause at the foot of Square Hill. Once the African Cape Corps would then march through their ranks and then launch a full frontal assault on Square Hill. From the Turks' position, Square Hill at the time represented the very same a scenario that presented them at Gallipoli. And because of the great victory that they attained at Gallipoli, their, 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 their thought process was that we're going to do the same to this infantry battalion that's coming to attack us tonight. But they were wrong. The battle lasted for about a little bit more than an hour initially before the first flags of the Egyptian expeditionary force could be seen in the Turkish trenches on top of the hill. Even Allenby was surprised at the speed at which one SACC had launched the assault, the assault and cleared them off of that particular hill. With Square Hill now firmly in the hands of, of, of the Egyptian expeditionary force and with all the objectives along the, all the other hills, dip in Chevron and so forth, Having been attained, they left, only one objective was left in the entire region of, of, of Palestine, and that was the, the hill of Kijibate. Because the, the Turks had suffered such a large amount of losses in the run-up to the battles leading up to, to Kijibate, there were a number of stragglers that led that, that uh, retired onto, onto Kijibate and most of these guys, most of these soldiers, they had actually lost their, their, their order of, of, of sensibility. In other words, they had a lot of soldiers, but there was, there was no military order. Allenby and his command staff then had to make a decision who to evict the Turks off the last vestiges in Palestine. And after much deliberation, which in hindsight appears to have been the wrong decision, um, he decided that the Cape Corps should do that. And then the night of the 20th of, of, of September, that fateful order came through. Owing to the terrain itself, it was very difficult to bring artillery to bear on, 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 on Fiji Bay. So the decision was to make the assault without artillery support and without support from the flanks. And I'm sure Colonel Jao will be able to articulate that. That is a suicide mission. The men assaulted the, the, the hill of Fiji Bay and it soon became apparent that the Turks had, in the meantime, realigned their battle strategy. In as much as that every single officer was killed or wounded in the assault. By about two o'clock the next morning, there was only one officer standing, and that was Captain Ewart. Um, Allenby then ordered the, the battalion to retire onto Square Hill, and the next morning, um, the first of the 17th Loyalist infantry, Indian Infantry was sent up and they found that the, the, the Turks had, had left the position 
creating yet another attack of the same veracity of the one that took place earlier would wipe them out completely. And that heralded the end of the Turkish influence in Palestine, which ultimately led them to retiring to their borders. And on the 11th of November, the armistice was signed, or was signed and sanity prevailed in the world. Man, that is a concise history. Wow, thank you so much. What a rich history. What a rich history uh, uh, to uh, World War I and the Battle of Square Hill. Thank you very, very much for taking us through uh, Adele. We really appreciate that rich history. And um, we're going back to Peter. Peter Bailey. Madam Speaker, can, uh, can yes. I just suggest that um, we ask Adele just to say something about his grandfather because he left it out. And I'd like oh, him just okay. to say the link that he's actually got to, to that battle. Okay, thank you very much. Adele, over to you again. Madam Speaker, um, I'm the grandson of 688 Charles Henry Cardinal of BCM. He, he was decorated for valor during that battle. Wow. Thank and, you very much. We, yes. There were 16 distinguished uh, conduct medals, eight military medals, uh, two orders of the crown of, of Italy, bronze, two decorations uh, of uh, Belgium, and also French. So the, the guys were highly rec uh, decorated. And so we've got a grandson of one of the top people um, with us, which is really fantastic. So great to have him with us. Wow, great. Thank you very much. No wonder, no wonder you, you, you joined us under the circumstances. Now I understand. <laughs> and then okay, let's go then. back to Israel, to, to Peter. Yes, I'd like to go back to Peter. So we've been uh, speaking uh, with Peter over the years, and he's had a, a particular interest with uh, a little surprise uh, project that he's been doing. And um, I'd like him to tell us about it, because I think it's really something unique uh, for South Africans uh, in Israel. Peter, over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I actually start speaking about that, uh, I want to welcome uh, two members of something called the Ochberg Heritage Committee, which I will tell you about. Dave Kaplan and, and Joel Klotnik, who are on the screen. Uh, Dave Kaplan is the chairman. And just a little story that ties up with Adil Karlsa. Uh, Adil found me one day and said, surely there were Jews in the, in the South African Cape Corps. And I said to him, Adil, there were no Jews in the Cape Corps. He said, you've got to find one. And I started researching and I, I, I trawled through books and names and books. And I came across a Sergeant Joe Siratsky from Cape Town. I phoned Dave Kaplan up because he comes from Cape Town originally. And I said, Dave, have you ever heard of a, a Joe Saratsky? He said, well, I actually come from Paro. My wife comes from Cape Town. Let me ask her. And I heard this answer coming back. Yes, of course, I know Joe Saratsky. He's my uncle. And, and so there we have Dave Kaplan sitting with us, who's also connected to one of the veterans that fought with one Cape Corps uh, during World War I in Palestine. Um, that's a little aside. My interest in One Cape Cork arose out of my being a member of this Isaac Ochberg Heritage Committee in Israel. You're probably wondering who Isaac Ochberg was and what he had to do with One Cape Cork, uh, or, or what he has to do with the whole story at all. Ochberg was a Ukrainian-born Jewish resident of Cape Town. He moved to Cape Town in 1907, and he became an extremely wealthy man. He was advised that hundreds of thousands of Jews were being killed in the Ukraine in racially motivated attacks at the end of the First World War between 1918 and 1920. These attacks left some three or 400,000 children as orphans in the Ukraine. There were, there were not enough orphanages for them. There was not enough money to look after them. They were in dire, dire straits. Isaac Ochberg raised money in the Cape. He got permission from then Prime Minister Jan Smuts to bring 200 children to the Cape. 
and off he went to the Ukraine at great risk to his life. And he rescued 200 children, he ended up bringing 178 of them to Cape Town. Half of them stayed in Cape Town in the Jewish orphanage there, and the other half were taken to the Jewish orphanage in Johannesburg, where they found a new life. So that was Isaac Ochberg, and that's why he's remembered uh, very much in the Cape community. Now, besides everything else, he was also a great philanthropist, assisting both Jewish and non-Jewish charities and causes of all kind. Isaac Ochberg had people knocking on his door for assistance regularly. Among the organizations he funded was the Yawan Coral, Coral Group in District 6 in Cape Town. The group was started in 1934 to provide at-risk colored youth with an alternative to life on the streets and a gang-related future. All the group's activities took place in the Isaac Ochberg Center, which he put up in District 6. And they're ongoing right up to the present time. The Ayan Coral Group is still going in Cape Town today. Ochberg also provided funds for the purchase of land in British Mandate Palestine to assist the many uh, Jewish refugees who had fled the turmoil in Eastern Europe, Ukraine in particular, uh, Belarus. They were faced with, with death on all sides. Um, and and they, they fled to the only place they could find succor was in Palestine. The land that he purchased or the money that, that he provided was used to purchase land in the Megiddo region. And that's where we connect with uh, one Cape Corps. The Battle of Megiddo was the name of the greater battle of which the Battle of Square Hill formed a part. Mm. And that's why I was researching one Cape Corps in reference to Megiddo. The, the regional council of, uh, of Megiddo granted a, a section of land, and this was called the Isaac Ochberg Memorial Park, and a beautiful memorial to Ochberg and to the orphans that he rescued was established there. And Dave Kaplan was one of the people that organized in 2000, 2011 a reunion of descendants. There's some three or 4,000 descendants of those orphans. So 178 people were res rescued and they became three or 4,000 today. Um, and we hope to be having another event next year, which will celebrate the centenary of the rescue of the uh, orphans from the Ukraine by Ochberg. We were hoping to do something for the Cape Court at the same time, but I'm going to come to that shortly and precisely what we are doing. While doing research on Megiddo some five years ago, I discovered the important role played by one Cape Corps. And through my research, I found this fellow, Adil Karlsa, and came into contact with him. I established that while there were monuments to the British, Australian, New Zealand, and Indian troops who had fought in the various battles in Palestine, there was no memorial to the members of One Cape Corps. Some of them are buried in the British War Cemetery in Jerusalem. Uh, and Dave Kaplan, Joel Klotnik and myself will be visiting that War Cemetery as soon as we are out of our lockdown, which we are going into for the next three weeks. Others were buried in Gaza and unfortunately those we cannot visit at this stage. I brought this information to the Ochberg Heritage Committee and it was unanimously decided that we approached the Megiddo Regional Council with a view to erecting a monument to the fallen men of One Cape Corps. The British government needed the victory at Megiddo for very, very strange reasons. They had published something called the Balfour Declaration. Uh, and the Balfour Declaration had to do with the creation of a homeland for the Jewish people who were living in dire straits in Eastern Europe and had been kicked out of their country by the colonial Romans from 2000 years ago uh, and remained a diaspora. Uh, and they were looking for their home. And the British said, if we have a victory over the Turks, we will create a home for you in Palestine. Back to Jerusalem, where the Jewish people originally came from. It's taken five long years but we are finally at a stage where we are planning the erection of a memorial to 1CC, to the fallen men of 1CC, working together with Itzchak Kholavsky, who is the mayor of the Megiddo Regional Council. He's very much behind us in this project. 
And we intend arranging for a number of descendants. And I, I didn't know that Vasco da Gama was a descendant. I'm sure Dave Kaplan has noted that. Uh, we intend inviting a number of descendants of the men who fought at Square Hill to join us for the consecration of a memorial. Uh, Godfrey knows all about this. I met with him about three or four years ago to discuss it. Um, and I've been working on this steadily. And all I can say is I'm delighted that we finally seem to be achieving a success. Um, the Balfour Declaration, of course, was very important in Palestine because it paved the way for the establishment of what became the Arab state of Jordan and the Jewish state of Israel in what had previously been the Ottoman territory of Palestine. So we owe a great deal of thanks and gratitude to the men of One Cape Corps, and we are going to make sure that they are suitably remembered with a memorial. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Peter. I hope that we will also be invited at the celebration of the centenary next year. Uh, I will await for the invitation as well. But thank you very much for taking us through that history. Uh, Mr. Giants, do you want to comment? Yes, if I, if I may, Madam Speaker. I, I think, uh, Peter, can you tell us uh, any ideas of what it's going to look like? Uh, any symbols and languages that might be on it? Uh, well, at, at this stage, uh, my idea is, and it's purely an idea that no design has been drawn up, is to have a, a concrete plinth, probably a square uh, concrete plinth, and then a triangular column. Uh, with one side of the triangle uh, in Afrikaans, one side of the, the, the which was which is the language, the majority language of the colored people, one side in Hebrew and one side in English. On the actual concrete plinth itself will be the names of all the fallen men of one Cape Corps. What, what would really be nice if we can bring in the, their symbol, their um, uh, their badge as well, which has got the uh, table mountain on it with the anchor and uh, the Lady of Hope. But uh, yeah, we'll persuade you slowly but surely. <laughs> but thank you, Peter. Much appreciated. And, thanks. and then I, be I believe, Godfrey, that you've struck a medal. Uh, I yes, believe I you've have. struck this medal. Um, and yes. I hope that we will be able to get copies of that medal to give there's, to the there's... people who attend this uh, commemoration when we do it. Lovely. Well, there's, there's the medal. So it's the Lady of Hope with uh, the uh, Table Mountain and also the anchor. And then we've made a coin as well. And so we'll be uh, getting citations for people as far as the medal is concerned. And then we'll be selling the coin to collectors, etc. cetera. And uh, so that will be ready for our, our service on Sunday. And I think uh, that, that's a, a good way for us to go now to uh, Councillor Vasco da Gama, who uh, to me is a very special person because um, before he became a speaker of, of the city of Johannesburg, he used to come to every single um, veteran memorial service that we had, and he seemed to be the last person to leave, and we were always talking at the end of every service. And then he became the, the speaker, and uh, he helped us enormously uh, with all of our services, etc. And as a, um, a descendant as well, he can tell us a little bit of, of his story, and I think also why it's so important for us to bring this to life in the city of Johannesburg. So over to Vasco da Gama. Wow, thank you so much. Vasco? Can you switch off the camera? Uh, maybe it will st the voice will be better. Maybe switch off the camera, Mr. Vasco da Gama. Yeah. Oh. Okay, there's, there's no change. No. Okay. Maybe, Can maybe, you... maybe in the meantime, Doc, uh, if uh, with your permission, if Sipo or Ndaga could just take us through what our viewers are saying, comments from our viewers, whilst we're trying to 
make sure that Council of Ascoda government is connected. We do want that history of the colored servicemen. And we were told, we are told by the former, by I think it was Peter, that uh, at some point they were not allowed to join the army. Oh no, I think it was that day. They were, they were not allowed to join the army. So really I'm sure that our viewers uh, are very, uh, 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 they are waiting to hear from the former speaker of the state of Johannesburg, Councillor Vasquadagama. But in the meantime, let's hear what our viewers are saying. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Oh, oh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker, and uh, thank you very much for this rich history and uh, very informative indeed. And of course, our viewers are saying um, 30 Sam Pat on Facebook said, Thank you very much for the update. Sabang Tony says, Thank you so much for the update. Nyameni um, Mongameli says, Thanks to the Speaker of Johannesburg and the team to bring this very important topic. It's very important for our children to know where we come from. Yeah. It clearly shows that we are led in Johannesburg. And uh, Pelelani is being naughty here, Madam Speaker, is talking about the Cape Flat gangsters. Um, and then uh, the last one, Mangno uh, Bangwenya says, congratulations, Councillor. Um, and uh, we have uh, leadership. And uh, Tando MCB says, interesting knowledge and uh, thank you very much uh, to all our speakers for just sharing with us uh, this uh, so that's it from my side Madam Speaker. thank you very much let's try and and check if uh, councillor vasco da gama is able to to share information with us okay. Mm. Oh no, this network is jealous. Yeah. Oh uh, dear. Madam Speaker, I think it's 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 very it's sad because it really would have been nice to have have um, had him just speak about uh, some of it. If I can just give a little bit of of, of history of some of it. When a lot of the Cape Core guys came back from the Second World War, they really um, battled to find accommodation, housing, etc. And uh, that is when the South African Legion of Military Veterans uh, approached the National War Fund, and I'm still a trustee of the War Fund, uh, for funding. And the city of Johannesburg gave the land, which is now Coronationville, where the flats are. And that money was used to build the block of flats where all of the Cape Core uh, descendants um, and also the soldiers uh, went. Oh, uh, Adele wants to say something? Oh, Adele, you must unmute yourself. Uh, I don't know. We're battling with Adele as well. Oh, he's but, muted. Oh dear, and now he's disappeared. Um, so it, it is interesting that that the the city of Johannesburg has got this connection uh, with the Cape Core uh, there in Johannesburg, and all of our services like the Remembrance Sunday, etc. Um, the city provides transport to bring people by bus to the Remembrance Sunday, which we really do appreciate. Um, enormously. We're trying to find a way of how we can get the Cape Core members together to uh, form one organization and come together because unfortunately at the moment they're very fragmented and I'm sure that we will, um, you know, come over the, uh, overcome that. I think, Madam Speaker, with your permission, I think let's move on to um, Sunday, what is happening in Johannesburg. And we're very grateful that you are the host of, of this uh, service. Um, it's going to be a virtual service, so we unfortunately cannot have the numbers that we normally have at the service. So what we have arranged is that we are doing the filming of various people laying their wreaths beforehand. And because we've got uh, Saturday and Sunday is Rosh Hashanah, um, the Jewish New Year, we've laid on a special um, for, uh, that the people can be uh, filmed 
laying their wreath, the Jewish faith, on the Friday afternoon as well. And so people will uh, come to the monument, which is the Rand um, Regiment's Memorial in Johannesburg. They will get out of their motor cars. We will hand them a wreath. Mr. Johannesburg is own. holding its weekly Heritage Month dialogue this afternoon, which will explore nope. the battle of the And we will then um, film them laying their wreath, and that will then be taken and edited uh, on Saturday night. The service will then take place um, at the monument at two o'clock on Sunday. And uh, there will be about 20 people maximum actually at the service. And we will film it and stream it live. And then what we're doing is when we lay the, the three wreaths, which will be your, your own one, one on behalf of the uh, uh, Cape Corps as well, then we will uh, have the hymn Amazing Grace. And during that, we will actually stream the people that have laid their wreaths uh, in recognition of it. And I've, I'm very pleased to say that we've got over 30 wreaths will be laid. Um, there, that is the recognition that people have given to the service. So thank you very much for that. And obviously, we will look at the coin and the, and the medal. Um, people will have to write in a, a citation. And it's for anybody that is descendant of First World War, Second World War, um, and we need to really have it as something special for people that have, um, you know, distinguished themselves. And it'll be for their spouses and dependents as well. So, Madam Speaker, that's all about Sunday. I don't know if you want to add anything to it before we go to Cape Town. No, uh, you can proceed to Cape Town, please, uh, uh, Mr. Okay. Jan. Thank you. Then um, we've got uh, Kevin Ashton on, on the line uh, as well. And um, Kevin is a, is a veteran. Uh, he's also a gunner, which uh, is very important. Because if you notice, the, on the front cover of this um, uh, book is the gun that was actually uh, captured during the battle. And that was moved down to um, uh, Kimberley. And the Gunners Association, which uh, Kevin is very senior in, he runs the whole of the Western Cape. The Gunners Association makes sure that all of the um, ceremonial guns that we've got throughout South Africa are upgraded and, and kept in pristine condition. And we really are very grateful to them. Kevin has, has uh, uh, organized a lot of these services in Cape Town. And he's going to talk about the Cape Town one and tell us because that is the connection that we've got uh, to them. Thank you, Thank you very Thank you, Madam Speaker. I think Godfrey has uh, uh, said everything that I was going to say. <laughs> but um, my, my connection with the uh, SACC in Cape Town came about in the, the year of the centenary. And um, it happened because the year before, the previous year, there was no uh, memorial service uh, a battle for Square Hill. So uh, we stuck our noses in and because, as Godfrey said, uh, I'm, you know, instrumental in putting on a lot of these uh, memorial services in Cape Town, SS Mendy, Gunners Memorial, obviously, uh, um, Square Hill, obviously, and um, Delville Wood, etc. So, and of course, Remembrance Day in uh, the city of Cape Town. So um, we stuck our noses in there and uh, we put on and assisted with the centenary, which was a real success. Uh, we managed to get... Um, um, Carl, Commander Carl down as well for that, uh, that uh, uh, um, memorial service. We managed to get um, Derek Nguebi down, uh, the, um, the DG of the DMV, and we got um, Major General Roy Anderson came down for it, and um, my old friend, uh, Deputy Mayor Ian Nielsen, insisted on, on, uh, on speaking, which he did. And um, so we had a, a real, real fantastic ceremony, uh, well supported by all, all uh, um, spheres. And um, so we've just carried on. Um, so we had a, a fairly small uh, service last year. And of course, this year, we are going ahead with a service um, in the castle of Good Hope. Um, as we have always done previously, uh, we will have 50 guests seated. Uh, we will have the band, we will have some troops. Uh, we've got real support from a few of the regimental uh, uh, regiments in Cape Town, which I was very pleased about. 
Um, so we will go ahead with a uh, with the service in uh, in Cape Town on Sunday the 27th. Um, it will also be uh, videotaped and uh, put out on uh, their Facebook page later in the day. Um, Peter, just to uh, touch a little bit on uh, the memorial that you're looking at, I've been working with the city of Cape Town for about two years now because we have come up with the idea of creating uh, a memorial acre in Cape Town. And the memorial acre in Cape Town we want uh, um, is where the Gunners Memorial is um, in, the, in the company's gardens, as well as Delver Wood and Lucan. Um, so we're working towards that. Um, Ms. Murphy will move to uh, the gardens as soon as that is ratified and we have things in place. So that will be one of the first uh, things that we will be doing to memorialize that with a full role of honor, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, just touching on what you were talking about earlier, we, 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 we're gonna be doing something similar in Cape Town in our Memorial Acre. So Sunday the 27th, uh, the memorial service will go ahead uh, with, uh, with good support. And I'm certain that we will get lots of, uh, uh, lots of good press out of it uh, uh, in Cape Town. So that's, my, that's, that's what I have. Any questions? Uh, Madam Speaker, if I could just add two things, please. Um, yes. Kevin, uh, I'm very interested to hear about this memorial acre yes. because we've been in discussion with the Cape Jewish community yes. who are looking to erect a memorial to one Cape Corps in Cape Town right. by the Jewish community of Cape Town. And right. I'm sure that uh, we will put you in contact with them um, and something can be done together there for a memorial. Um, and Madam Speaker, I just want to say that this initiative of yours brings people together. And that Correct. is so important. Mm. The other thing we are doing, hopefully, in bringing people together in Cape Town, I'm not sure if you're aware of that, Kevin, is a school, the Square Hill School. Yes. And we hope to twin a school from the Megiddo region with Square Hill. Once yes. again, bringing people together. together. Uh, that's an initiative that we'll be starting with shortly. Yes. yes. Thank well, thank you. you for that, Peter. We, I will certainly uh, be in touch. Um, we hopefully will have um, headmaster, headmistress, and uh, head uh, prefects um, of Square Hill School at the memorial service on Sunday the 27th. So uh, we've had them before uh, a number of years ago, and we will, uh, we, we're trying to get them this year. So um, let's see. But the collaboration, I will keep you up to date. Uh, um, just offline, I'll get your email address, probably from Godfrey. And uh, we can pick it up from there. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Lovely. Madam Speaker, I think one of the things that's been very interesting, and, and Vasco da Gama, I hope he can still hear me, um, we've been trying to say that we need to set up a memorial um, for the Cape Corps in Johannesburg as well. And we've been looking at where should we actually house it? Uh, should it be at the Singal, which is um, at, the, at the Coronationville, et cetera? Um, there are various sites. And if I could speak to you about that sometime, and the Department of Military Veterans has got money for uh, memorials, and maybe we can twin with them to actually assist us to do that. But it would really be nice one year to um, have a, our own memorial for the Cape Corps guys in Johannesburg as well. And Madam Speaker, I don't want to take up more of your time. I, I, I just want to carry on with the sentiments that have been passed that I think this initiative of yours of COVID is, is really tremendous. I think this is the kind of positive things, initiatives that have come out of it. And it's meant that so many more people are aware of the Battle of Square Hill. And I, I really thank you for that time. We've, I've worked with now eight different speakers in Johannesburg, and they've all given us full support. And I must say that uh, it's the only metro city that has got its um, medal that it's given out to the veterans in gratitude of what they've done. And I just thank you for carrying on with the sterling work um, that your predecessors have done. And I look forward to working with you again. And thank you for giving us this opportunity this afternoon. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Giles. Indeed, the memorial for the Cape Town Corps in Johannesburg, we, we have noted that request and we, we shall indeed uh, arrange, sit down and talk about it. We'll work together as well with Councillor Vasco da Gama because we are all 
in the city of Johannesburg. We're all working for this city. So we shall work together. Thank you very much for this history. You know, uh, this history must be told, especially for the current generation and the generations to come. This history must not be lost. I think it is very important for us as a nation to understand where we come from uh, in order for us to be able to soldier on and chart the way forward. But we should never forget our history. And we should, uh, we should uh, share this rich history with the young generations so that it is not forgotten. And it is written in the books of South Africa. Maybe before I, I hand over to the next speaker, uh, Councillor Vasco da Gama, we are very sorry that you could not uh, connect and your network could not allow us to hear from you as, as a descendant and also what your father and your forefathers went through. But I'm hoping that maybe one day we will arrange something, even if it's a debate in council, um, so that you can tell this story. So we will indeed give you another opportunity. Dr. Dr. Fundi Lenyati, I know that you have studied biology as a doctor, but mm -hmm. I'm sure that you are very also having much interest in the in, in, in this rich history. If I could just have comments from yourself. Well, um, I think the first comment is that uh, Mr. Vastro Takama had his hand uh, raised about a minute ago. So oh. maybe let's give him a chance again. Uh, oh. Because he raised his hand uh, about a minute or so ago. Okay, Councillor Dagama. Hi, this network is so jealous. Hi, this connection is so, so jealous, Vasco Dagama. Okay, let's let's hear from you, Doc. All right, thank you, thank you, Speaker. I think uh, for me, this is very interesting uh, to hear about this rich history. Uh, you know, and uh, I think as South Africans, we need to know that we are a diverse nation. Uh, but the history is intertwined uh, and we need to celebrate that. So when you are saying we've got a heritage month, the heritage of everybody who you know, uh, is South African or is connected to South Africa. So may you continue to build the bridges uh, so that uh, we can keep this history for generations to come. Thank you very much, Doc. And thank you very much for your support. And I'm sure some, somebody is, is clapping hands for you. So we need to keep this rich history indeed. And from the city of Johannesburg, I must actually appreciate the work that is being done by our protocol team, because it is our protocol team who always remind us of these important events of uh, honoring our veterans, of honoring our, our people who, who fought these uh, wars. So we really appreciate our protocol team and for working behind scenes in making sure that these commemorations are not forgotten. Maybe before I go to uh, uh, Mr. Giles, would you want to do the wrap up or, or you have already done your wrap up? If not, I will allow you to do the wrap up and then I give to Sipo to read just few comments and um, from the media as well, and the chair of chairs will then close for us. Yeah, Madam, Madam Speaker, thank you. I think I've wrapped up it. It really just the big thank you to you and, and to your team. And I agree with you with your protocol team. They work tirelessly, France and Octavia. They are absolute stars, and we appreciate them every single day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Giles. Sipo? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I think uh, all I wanted to, to share with you is this particular clip. I hope it'll be audible enough for everybody to listen. 
And uh, thank you very much to the media that have showed an interest in uh, covering today's discussions. And um, I wanna play this one quickly for you, Madam Speaker. Uh, the city of Johannesburg is holding its weekly Heritage Month Dialogue this afternoon, which will explore the Battle of the Square Hill. The battle in Palestine towards the end of the First World War is significant to South Africa because a specially formed Cape Coloured Corps helped defeat Turkish forces allied to Germany. The battle also helped end the Ottoman Empire's the city of Johannesburg also helped end the Ottoman Empire's control of the Middle East. Among those taking part in the virtual dialogue from 4 p.m. are descendants of core members, historian and author Adil Karolsa and councillor Vasco de Gama. Godfrey Giles, who will also participate in the honorary life, is the honorary life vice president of the World's Veteran Association. You know, at that stage, anybody of colour was not allowed to carry arms. So it was a major event where they were allowed to actually carry arms, and they felt that they were capable of fighting. So it was a matter of them saying, you know, allow us to go ahead and do it. And there was a definite need for it, and they distinguished themselves in this particular battle. We are really admirably here. So that's it from my side, Madam Speaker. And uh, Eldos FM, that was uh, earlier on, it was uh, Hot 91.9. And of course, uh, Alex FM has also showed an interest. And then we also look forward to other media houses that uh, might have an interest over the weekend as well. So thank you very much to everybody for, for educating us and empowering us. Thank you very wow. much, Mr. Godfrey. Well, thank you very much, uh, Sipo, our communications officer. And thank you, Tuntlaga. And thank you to the team from the speaker's office and the team from the city of Johannesburg. Thank you very much for making sure that this debate is a success. This is our history, our rich history. We have a rich history as a nation. And if we come together as a nation and go back to our roots, I'm sure that even the challenges that we are faced with, the challenges of, uh, of, of moral decay, the challenges of the lack of Ubuntu for, uh, in some instances will, of, will, will be overcome. We, will, we, we shall overcome if we work together as a nation. Thank you very much. With that said, let me allow the Chair of Chairs to do a vote of thanks and thank all our panelists, our participants and everybody else. To, over to you. Councillor Mulauzi, our Chair of Chairs. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, it was, uh, it was an excellent, excellent, excellent debate. The rich history that we have that we don't anymore talk about, for it to be brought back again, thank you very much, uh, 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 panelists. And the, we would like to express our sincere gratitude and thank everyone who participated in this remark, remarkable history uh, memory, down memory lane. I would like to thank uh, Peter Bailey, uh, Kali, Godfrey Giles, and um, Kevin Ashton, uh, Councillor Vasco da Gama, even though we did not get your, your, your part of the speech. Thank you very much for having taken your time to be with us here. Councillor Mfikwe, who's always there for us. And uh, I would like to even thank uh, you, Madam Speaker. You are doing a very excellent job together with um, Dr. Dr. Uh, Nyati. Thank you very much. This history without you, we wouldn't have had it. I know that we always, uh, as, a, as, a, as a city, the speaker of, through the speaker of council, we always commemorate the Delville Wood Memorial, the SS Mendy, and the Remembrance Sunday. We always do those together with, 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 with as, as advised by Octavia and Franz. And even this today that we are talking about the Battle of the Square Hill, thank you very much to make making sure that we, as the city of Johannesburg, always commemorate and remember those who fought and died on our behalf as, 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 a, as a country. And Madam Speaker, I would like to thank all your office. I would like to thank 
Dr. Nyati's officers, office staff, and all the, the people who joined either on Facebook, on YouTube, or all the platforms that, that were made available to the people to be able to participate. Madam Speaker, I would like to take this opportunity to wish all the, the events that are going to happen on Sunday, the 20th in Johannesburg. I wish you well and a, a successful day and a successful uh, a commem commemoration of the day. And even on the 27th in Cape Town, I would like to wish you well on behalf of the city of Johannesburg. And with those, I would like to thank you, Madam Speaker, and keep on doing that because today we know things that we are not even knowing and we never even had interest of those. And today we see the rich history that we have been not looking at and the things that we should be doing. But thank you very much and continue doing that I hope everybody who enters into that space of the speaker will continue and make sure that we have that relationship with the, with the regiments. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chair of Chairs. Indeed, we do invite, I, I, I see Godfrey's hand is up. I'll give you Godfrey to, to say this final word. I'm but just I just... And congratulations. That's all the hand is for, Chair. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. That's awesome. Uh, I would like to invite our viewers to join visual uh, uh, ceremony on Sunday, the 20th. We will share the platform. Uh, we will also remind our viewers and everybody to be part of this uh, ceremony on Sunday, even if uh, we, we won't be able to be physically there, but uh, we will invite you. And also with the new normal, I'm hoping that we will be able to join the Cape Town Sunday as well on visual, uh, Godfrey, if we get the, the, the link and the login details, we shall indeed uh, join the Cape Town Memorial. Thank you very much. And um, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you to everybody. Thank you. We love you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Thank you Godfrey. Great show. Thank, Thank you, you to thanks everybody. To well as well. Well done. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well Bye-bye. Bye-bye.